Thomas told me not to tap the mic, so y'all are witnesses. I'm testing one, two. How's everybody doing tonight? Present? All right. We are actually going to be starting a new Wednesday night uh, lesson series. I had asked for possible topics, and uh, one of our members suggested the idea of um, the Holy Spirit. So I thought, well, that's a, that's a really interesting topic. It's biblical, one that I enjoy studying. I've never done a study of the Holy Spirit, per se. So, um, uh, Roy, before you sit down, could you grab these behind me? They're on the communion table. And then if you'll get somebody to help you pass those out. Thank you, sir. I have a handout that is a uh, two-sheet handout front and back, and I'll need a copy as well. I think I must have included the original. Oop, thank you. Thank you. Oh, those are the original. Those are the originals. Thank you. Okay, great. Bobby's going to help you, I think. All right. So what, what you'll be getting in just a moment um, with your handout is on, on one side I have a list of the various topics of basically it's like a syllabus of the things that I want to cover during class in other words I'm setting a goal for us as a class to talk about these things and and I will also say that as you're getting your your list if there's something not on there that you'd like to talk about let me know because I always feel strongly in our Wednesday night Bible class, we want it to be an open forum, a discussion, give and take, and we're all here to learn. So if there's something that you personally would like to know about the Holy Spirit that is not on the list, let me know, and we'll, we'll be sure and include it. That makes sense, maybe a specific event, a specific verse, or the role of the Spirit. So did everybody get a copy? Are getting a copy? So let's take just a moment as we begin. And if you're watching us virtually, I'd like to welcome you as well. If you're live streaming on Facebook or you happen to pull us up on YouTube, we're glad you're here. And I will mention too that I'd be glad to take comments from our remote viewers. I know one member told me today he'd be watching live stream. So message me, um, text me through my cell phone number, and uh, submit a question or a comment, and I'll be glad to share that with all the class. So uh, let's just go through this uh, list of, of topics. Um, is the Holy Spirit a he or an it? And we'll talk during, during the progression of our lessons, we'll talk about a little bit of the history of how he's taught in, in the church over the years. Um, where did the Holy Spirit come from? You know, what was the origin of the Holy Spirit, the role? And I've, I've just listed HS, Holy Spirit, instead of writing out the whole Holy Spirit. Uh, what was his role or her, the Holy Spirit's role in creation? Uh, what about inspiration and revelation of the Word of God and, and the role of the Holy Spirit in that? Did the Holy Spirit minister to Jesus was one of the questions. What did Jesus mean when he told Nicodemus in John 3 that you have to be born of the Spirit? Where about the Holy Spirit now? Where does the Holy Spirit live? Um, what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? What were the roles of the Holy Spirit in the early church? We read a lot about that in, in, the, in the book of 1st and 2nd Corinthians where he addresses some of the issues and roles of that Holy Spirit in the early church. Um, Another thing that I thought was interesting, what about the fruit of the Holy Spirit? And does that apply to us today? Do Christians have fruit that the Holy Spirit produces? And what does it mean if a person quenches the Spirit? Could that happen to us? What about the unpardonable sin? Does that involve the Holy Spirit? And does Jesus discuss that? And the last one I sort of talked about uh, a lot of people are hesitant to acknowledge or study the Holy Spirit because they maybe have seen a particular religious group worship in such a way where 
It makes them very uncomfortable. Um, it might involve people rolling around on the floor or speaking in an un unintelligible language or clapping or barking like dogs. Um, and, and if you grew up in the 60s and 70s, you probably know what I'm talking about. And, and people will tell you that the Holy Spirit was moving through them and causing them to do this. Um, is that really the Holy Spirit? And what should we do if we run into a person who worships in that way? Okay, does that make sense? So this is just a list I came up with in about 10 or 15 minutes. There may be some other things that you run, in, run into that you'd like to include as well. Any comments on, on that? Questions? That sound like a pretty good list to you guys? Is that all right? Yes, no, good? Everything you ever wanted to know about the Holy Spirit and was afraid to ask? How many of y'all have ever heard a lesson on the Holy Spirit, by the way? Two people, three. Would you say it's a subject we talk a lot about in the church? N not at all. And that's kind of sad. But... Um, Nonetheless, we will boldly go where no man goes before, right? So I'll talk a little about that in a minute. Now, as I introduce this, I mentioned earlier that the Holy Spirit was a requested topic, and I'm thankful it was, uh, one that I've always had an interest in. And I want to stress to all of you that I'm open to your questions and your comments. As we go along this class, if somebody wants to dive a little deeper and say, can we pause our discussion here I'd like to know more about this it will not offend me in any way because uh, we are all learning this together and I'm certainly uh, no expert as a matter of fact I use sort of the analogy how many of y'all went on a school field trip when you were little anybody get on the big yellow bus and go on a field trip they're kind of fun and field trips are sort of a teacher's nightmare because you've got all these little kids running around and you're trying to run corral and make sure none of them escape or get run over or something. But field trips were always fun because it took you out into a different environment. You could walk around, look at stuff, pick things up. Um, it was hands-on and a learning experience. And I kind of see our, our class this, on these Wednesday nights as a field trip. So we're walking along together. I'll be your tour guide, right? I'll be leading you, directing you, pointing things out. You may say, can I stop and look at that? And, and so in our class, you might want to actually stop and pick something up and look at it and examine it, you know, turn it over and manipulate it. And then we may just stop and look very closely at something if you're interested because that's what field trips are to do is expose you and help you get hands-on and learn, okay? Uh, I am in no way an expert on the Holy Spirit. Uh, and as a matter of fact, as I speak to you, I have two books in route from Amazon on the Holy Spirit that I'll be reading and learning as we go, okay? Men that have studied this subject a lot more than I have. Um, so I'll be reading uh, the Bible, uh, reading books, reading commentaries about the Holy Spirit, and so I just want us to, to learn together. I don't want you to feel intimidated or like I can't ask that question. You know, he'd think I'm ignorant or I don't under. Don't be embarrassed. There's no such thing as a stupid question. You know, if we can learn from it, and there's probably somebody else that has the same question that you do. So please, please, please do not be intimidated to ask a question. Throw your hand up and say, hey, I'd like to know more about this. One of the things I want to do as a teacher is I want to admonish you a little bit. I want to challenge you. I want to, this is one of those moments, are you looking at me? All right, are you paying attention? You will only get out of this class what you put in it. All right, you will only get out of this class what you put in it. If you show up on Wednesday nights having done no reading, no preparation, no self-study, you'll only get what I feed you. Uh, Meg had a phrase for that. I can't think of it now, but you just show up and, you know, you get taught and then you go home and you forget it all. I would like to think, and maybe I'm a little naive, all right, I'd like to think that maybe some of you will get your own book and do your own study on the whole topic of the Holy Spirit for your own personal benefit and maturity. 
And then when you come to class, you can say, Brother Tom, a few days ago I was reading this, and I wanted to share what I learned and help us all learn together. So you will benefit if you invest your time and your own personal study in this topic. Make sense? Teachers, do you agree with me? I'm on the right track? Yeah. I've got a teacher in here nodding her head, right? Yes, Sean. Okay, I'm going to be real cautious here and answer this question. I do not recommend these books because I have not read them yet. And, and as I read them, I may find something where I'm like, ooh, ooh, I don't know that I agree with that. That may not be biblical, okay? So these are, let me say, first of all, Sean, any book you read other than the Bible is written by a man or a woman. Amen? Amen. Therefore... The opinions or the positions that these people take that write the book may not always be in line with what we believe or teach. So having said that, uh, the books I'm reading are called The Holy Spirit Revised and Expanded. That's by Charles C. Ryrie, R-Y-R-I-E. The Holy Spirit Revised and Expanded, Charles C. Ryrie. That was recommended in my research. And the second one is The Mystery of the Holy Spirit by R.C. Spruill. Did I say that right? Spruill? He's been around a long time and written a lot of commentaries. But let me say again, these two books, The Holy Spirit Revised and Expanded and The Mystery of the Holy Spirit, these are written by men who are not perfect. And they may say things that we disagree with. I have a good friend that uh, I used to uh, meet with that was an involvement minister and he said, you know, years and years ago, I always taught brethren in the church, when you read a book written by a man or a woman, you're always welcome to eat the fish and spit out the bones, right? If there's something you don't agree with, just say, I don't agree with that, but this has a lot of good meat. It's a good book, and it's very biblical, but I may not agree with that part of it. Doesn't mean it's a bad book. So anyway, those, I'm sorry. Yes. Great. That's a great question. If you'll hold on a minute, if you'll hold on a minute, I'm getting there, okay? But you're, you're exactly right. I've intentionally stayed away from TV evangelists who empire build and are sensational, who a lot of them have written books on the Holy Spirit. No, thank you. Not interested because they, they make a lot of money and have a lot of readers. No, thank you. I want a more scholarly approach. Now, having said that, um, here is my answer to your question. A very good statement, by the way. Our greatest interest and weight will be given to God's word to explore and answer questions. I wrote that, quote, unquote. So God's word will carry so much more weight than any book that I might read. But I like to read books on scholarly men who have studied maybe have a deeper understanding than I do. One of the reasons I think reading books might be helpful on the subject of the Holy Spirit is there are certain aspects of God that are hard to understand. Would you agree? You can study your whole life on a subject and still not have all the answers. And um, there, this is one of those subjects that a lot of people really struggle with, the Holy Spirit, you know. You mentioned the Holy Spirit, and some people are like, ooh, we can't talk about that here. Really? Why? Because it's not really well understood. Well, does that mean we can't talk about it? Well, it's, I'm not comfortable. I'm like, yeah, I want to talk about something I don't really understand because I might learn something. Let's dig. Let's dig in the Bible and see what the truths are about the subject because there may be something really important I need to know that I've never been taught and considering that all the people in our class tonight maybe two or three have ever heard a lesson on the Holy Spirit I suspect you haven't been exposed to much teaching on the Holy Spirit make sense so we need to dig we need to get in the word we need to ask those hard questions in first Timothy 316 um, the Bible says, great indeed, we confess, is the mystery 
of godliness. And so it is a mystery, this, this idea of Jesus coming in the flesh, Jesus revealing himself as Messiah, and that God sent him a predestined plan to save mankind. That's a great mystery. There's a lot of things about God I don't understand. There's a lot of things about his techniques and methods I don't understand. Later in that same passage of 1 Timothy 3, it says that he was justified or vindicated by the Spirit. By the Spirit. Well, there's that Spirit again. What does that mean? And how can we understand what it means? So I, I say all of these things to help us realize we're not really well educated on the subject of the Holy Spirit. We're just not. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just part of our culture in the churches of Christ. So how do you remedy that? Well, you just jump right in into the deep end and start treading water and learn what you can and, and talk to other people and read for yourself. Go to, the, go to the Bible, Patsy. Study the Bible on all the passages you can on the Holy Spirit. Begin to learn what it is and how he helps us and what it's there for. And, and, and most importantly, how does it apply to my life? If God made this thing or this person or this power, this entity, what is his role in my life? John. A moderator? Yeah. I know that in Romans 16, the Bible tells us that one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is that he is a, a mediator between God and, and us. You know, sometimes in times of, of, of deep sorrow or depression, maybe even we're so upset about something we even can't pray, the Bible tells us that we have this connection to God where we're sort of communicating and the Holy Spirit helps us, helps us with that. Very interesting idea. And we'll be, we'll be reading that later in Romans um, 16. Yep. So I'd like to spend a little bit of time studying tonight. Uh, and we do have two passages that I'll spend in the next 20, 25 minutes. But... When I, when I started preparing a lesson on the Holy Spirit, one of the things that I did is I did a word study. And who can tell me in the Old Testament what language was used for the, for the ancient Jewish text? Hebrew, right, Hebrew. When we switched over after a 400-year period of silence from the Old Testament to New Testament, what language was used for the New Testament? Greek. A little bit of Aramaic, not much, mostly Greek. So you got two languages, Hebrew and Greek. Both of those use the word Holy Spirit. And so uh, what I did is uh, I said, well, let's go to the Old Testament and, and see where the Holy Spirit, this this entity, being, power, person, what exactly is he? Where is he mentioned in the Old Testament? Now, does anybody know the first reference to the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament? Genesis? Genesis 1 and 2. That's pretty early, isn't it? Let's turn there to Genesis, 1, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. You want to read that? For us, Dennis, you got it open? Okay, you can find it. Let me go over here to my Bible app. Go to Genesis chapter 1. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and, and you got that, Dennis? Okay, now, I'm kind of strange. You know, you're thinking, well, I've thought that for a long time, Brother Tom. 
I like, when I read something, I immediately see it in my mind, right? It's like this movie. I'm watching a movie. What do you see when you read this? Tell me what you see in your mind's eye. Okay, a swamp. Why is it a swamp, John? It's just a big, like a pot of whatever, right? All right. Yeah. Okay, so if you were standing wherever the spirit was hovering, what would you see? Pardon? Okay, trick question. Look at look at the verse right under it. What did God create the next day? Ah. Yeah, got you. Sorry. You took you took the bait. You wouldn't see anything. So it was just, okay, we'll go with John's description. It's this bubbly swamp of ingredients, all kind of twirling, swirling around, and there is no light. It's completely dark. Why? Because God has made no light. These are just the ingredients, right? But yet God, in some form, is doing what over this bubbly ingredient pot what is he what is he doing what does that mean what why use that word okay he had to hover because yeah how do you have how can you stand on land when there is none right it's just a swirling bubbly Okay, here we go. My little brain is like, oh, this just doesn't make sense. It doesn't compute. What is the role of God? Well, there's somebody out there orchestrating all of this and almost, you know, directing things to happen on certain days. And apparently it wasn't Messiah, right? It wasn't the Father. Who was it? The Spirit. All right, what can we learn from this picture of God's Spirit hovering, being present over this mass of nothingness, ingredients floating around? And then the very next verse, God says, okay, it's time for light. Boom, and there's light. The light was good. God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. Let it separate the waters from the waters. That doesn't make sense to me, but I think what it's talking about is the water in the sky and the water in the oceans, which to me, that's just so mind-blowing. You know how heavy water is? It's like eight pounds. Eight pounds. 0.3 pounds per gallon and all that is up in the clouds oh man so God said okay all of this water I'm going to leave some of it in the oceans and now I you know the light I could if I were observing watching the spirit hovering and doing all this the light is now separating the waters of the ocean and the waters up in the clouds that's why the waters are separated perhaps that means that there was some sort of continental separation I don't know again it's just so mind-boggling to think that in a 24-hour period God was saying Let's do this, Let, let's do this, let's do this. And what's really cool about all this is the Holy Spirit, which is God, is orchestrating all of this, making it happen. Isn't that amazing? Sean, you had your hand up. You have a comment or question?
right? Yes. Yep. So here is the Spirit of God hovering, verse 2, over the face of the waters. Let there be light. So that was created. And then there was an expanse, a mist of the waters, separation of the waters. Um, he says he made waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. That's why I believe that it was the atmospheric moisture up there. And, and, and the Bible actually refers in other references in the book of Job, I think, to the veil or the curtain. It's like a curtain of iron, which is our, our atmosphere, which holds billions and billions and billions and tons of, of water. Amazing. And so there's an expanse called the heaven. There was evening, there was, there was morning, the second day, and then, and then so forth and so on. We have the creation of the dry land. Um, they, he gathered the seas together, and then, and then sprouting and vegetation and seed, and all these things came. You know, I, I always wonder, do you wonder when God made a tree on the very first day, how old was it? Did he make a hundred-year oak on the first day? You know, or were they all seedlings? Uh, how old were the animals when God made them the first day? Just so many things that are fascinating. But to me, it's, it's reassuring and comforting to know that God was present in the form of his spirit, hovering over all this, making it happen. So I want you to, if nothing else tonight, I want you to remember that the Holy Spirit was an active and integral part in the creation of the universe, and it almost leads me to believe that he was the one in charge of making it all happen, the creation itself. In verse 2, he's explicitly mentioned. And then from there on out, it just says, God said, God said, God said. Yeah, El, Elohim. Is that what Elohim literally means? A, a three, a totality of three. Now, yeah. Yeah, what I meant was, I don't know, I'm not sure exactly what I said, but Messiah was present, but he wasn't the one necessarily carrying it out. In verse 2 it says the Spirit. Now what's interesting yeah yeah the Logos yeah and Gene brings an interesting point I don't know if you ever thought about this but from verse 2 down all it says is God God, 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 God. Until you get to verse 26. Somebody read that for us. Verse 26. Okay, so given my natural curious, curious mind, I say in verse 26, who is God speaking to when he says, let us make man in our plural image? Who is God speaking to? Yeah. Okay, so follow my logic. If we see Holy Spirit introduced in verse 2, hovering above the water, God says to himself, let us make man in our image. We know for sure he's probably talking to the Spirit, but he's also talking to Jesus, Messiah. Logos, the word, John, and what, what Brother Gene is referring to is in John 1, 
in the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh, and he did what? He dwelt among us. So we all know, because we talk about this a lot, that's Messiah, Messiah, Messiah. He came and he lived. He was born as a baby and died for us on the cross and was resurrected. Yay, we all understand that. But when we go back and talk about the Holy Spirit, you're like, I don't know anything about that. I don't talk about the Holy Spirit. No. Holy Spirit. Why, why did the Holy Spirit get neglected so much? Why? It's sad. When he was just as active and just as present as the Father and Messiah. Why have we neglected him? I think I know the answer, but I'm not going to say. You're going to say what you think. Why have we neglected him so much? What do you think? <laughs> okay. Yeah, why, why are we so hesitant to talk about? Okay, please. Yes. Right. We'll never truly understand the whole story of God. So, better and by by, yeah. By and by, when the morning comes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The logos, I think, is that correct? Logos, the Greek. In the beginning was the logos, the word, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And I love, I love what he said. Before Abraham was, I am. I was back there with the father. I was back there with the Spirit. I've been ever-present. I've, I've never begun. I have always been. I am now and I will always be. <gasps> they said in shock. How can he say that about himself? He's claiming to be deity. He's claiming to be the Son of God. He's like, no, I'm claiming to be God. <laughs> Actual God. I am. I am the same I am that called out to Moses in the burning bush. I was present the creation. Now we get that about Messiah. That's a, that's a part we talk a lot about and discuss, but when it comes to the Spirit, I'm afraid because we don't understand so much, because we're unsure, we tend to say, uh, let's just put that in I'm not sure category. Maybe we'll come back. A lot of your what? Yeah, and boy, you know, this is scary because uh, I mentioned that in my notes that um, that we have to have faith. We have to have faith. That may be on my written notes. So, I, Dennis, I think you're on to something, and that is that we'll never fully understand God. Um, and I talk about that. If, if you'll turn in, in your... Uh, second page of your notes here we go if you'll flip that over um, will you read will you read that first top of the page Dennis since you made that statement about understanding God I thought you might be a good one to read that Ooh. 
Woo, that sounds familiar. I think I had some students in class that just said that. Isn't that amazing? And you know what Glenn Shipman would say if he were here? He goes, well, that's just the spirit. How things happen coincidentally where we say things and think the same things and make the same thoughts in the same period of worship. That's almost verbatim what both of you just said. And now you're reading my statements that were made earlier in the afternoon about why do we not discuss the Holy Spirit. We just don't understand him. We, we have trouble computing. We have trouble compartmentalizing the Holy Spirit. And because we get so terrified when we see people rolling around in floors and jumping over pews and barking like dogs and saying in the intelligible language things and worshiping, it's like, oh, I don't want any part of that. No, thank you. Okay, no, that's fine. Y- yes. A physical body. We see pictures of him. He's got a little circle around his head. Okay. He spoke to the patriarchs. Right. A fo- more of a force. Yeah. Y- yes. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, it's hard to grasp, isn't it? It really is hard to grasp. And and you know, I would say to that, Mike, it's okay for us to not to fully understand or even grasp all of the ways God can reveal himself to us. But we need to go back and sit comfortably in faith, Paulette, and just say, while I may not understand him, I know that he loves me and that he wants what's best for me. And most importantly, he took away my sin. He died for me. So if he loves me that much, I'm just going to trust him, even though I don't understand this third part of him, the Holy Spirit. Ooh, I, I, need, I need help understanding that part of him. But, Paulette, because God is the Holy Spirit, and that is a part of God, and I know he loves me so much, I just would rather understand him better so I can benefit from that part of God that I don't grasp. Does that make sense? Amen. Yeah, amen. And so, as Patsy said earlier tonight, and I so much appreciate her comments, let us dig, Patsy, into the Word to study the Spirit, because there may be some things that we just were never taught that were invaluable that maybe we've not understood or grasp about the Holy Spirit. So my goal, one of my goals as a teacher for this subject is, if I mention the Holy Spirit, don't go, oh, I don't, I'd like you to go, oh, yeah, the Holy Spirit. Because we've, we've really kind of jumped into the deep end and studied him, and he's wonderful. I don't understand him, but wow, he's God, <laughs> you know, and he's there for me. I still don't understand him, but wow, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That makes sense. I want you to, I want you to like, yeah, the Holy Spirit. Man, I missed this. I wasn't taught this stuff. It's great. Now, yes. Yes. God the architect, Jesus the builder. The blueprint. Okay, good. I've heard some very interesting contrasts and comparisons of, of the Trinity and how to understand it. But I just tell people that the Holy Spirit is really God. Um...
God is revealing himself to us, but he does it in three ways, okay? Look at me, for example, I, I'm a man. You know, I'm standing here in front of you talking and speaking and interacting and listening and asking questions. And, but as, as a man, I'm, I'm speaking to you as a father. Would you believe that? Am I a father? Well, yeah. Actually, Emily is visiting with us tonight in the fellowship hall in the ladies' class. I have two children. But wait a minute, I'm also a son. Am I a son? Yes, I have a natural father, Mr. John Payne. But I'm also speaking to you as a brother. Which one am I? I'm all three at the same time. And I act different ways depending on my role and what's needed. When I speak to my brother, I'm a brother. When I speak to my son, I'm a father. When I speak to my father, which I can't now, I'm a son. I'm all three. And one man stands before you. And how I interact or speak or direct myself depends on the circumstances. So let's think about it this way. If the Holy Spirit is in fact God, one of those three roles that I just described to you, then let's make sure we can listen to him, communicate with him, and benefit from him, even though we don't really understand him. He's still God. He was right there in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. He said, verse 26, let us make man in our image. So he is God. Now, I want to read a quick note. This is from Anna Morgan, who's been listening to us online. Anna says, I have different emotions. Uh, for God, I look at it like I don't want to let him down. For Jesus, it's a joyful love. Uh, she has a joyful love for him. She said, but, and thank you for honesty, Anna. She says, but the Holy Spirit, I fear. <laughs> okay. I don't want to disappoint God, the Father. I so much love and appreciate Jesus. He makes me joyful, but the Spirit, I fear. I feel my face um, grow pale thinking of the Holy Spirit, she says. So I'm, I'm hearing from Anna some real fear. I feel my face grow pale thinking of the Holy Spirit. I know there's great power in three, but usually the Spirit... Um, I didn't quite understand her text. So, but anyway, she's saying that she doesn't really understand the Spirit, even though she acknowledges that's God. And because she doesn't understand the Spirit, her response is fear. I fear him because I don't understand him. We tend to be real cautious. It's like, have you ever gone to the door of somebody that has never met you and you knock on the door? And and they look through a little hole and they see a face they don't know. What do they do? Do they fling that door wide open? Hey, come in! Is that what they say? What do they do if they don't know you? Yeah. Do you have any identification? Or they may open the door about that wide. Yeah. Do, do I know you? I mean, that's, isn't that normal, Anna? You know, if we're not comfortable or not really have a relationship with somebody, we're very cautious because we just don't know. They may hurt us. All right. Um, Dennis, we're running out of time, but if you'd continue Romans 11.33, that's what you read at the, at the top of the page. This confirms that there's a lot of things we still don't understand. Romans 11.33, oh, the depth. Yes, inscrutable. Amen. Uh, Jim Olinger writes a question. I just saw that. He wrote six minutes ago. Can you explain the change of the Holy Ghost to the Holy Spirit? Uh, I'm going to table that, Jim. We'll get to that next week. 
But what I would like to ask you to do, we're out of time. We've had a really good discussion tonight, and I appreciate your thoughts and comments. I'd like you to read the second half of that page in your handout, because what's interesting is in Romans 11, Dennis, verse 33, Paul just sort of asks this open-ended question as he writes to the church in Rome. Who has known the mind of the Lord, right? We really can't even understand him. We can't even attempt to understand him. But notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, Paul answers that question. And the answer is, there is someone who knows the mind of the Lord. There is someone who knows it. So that'll be your assignment for next week is read the second half of that page. And uh, we'll talk about that next week. Look forward to our class and we'll get into some word studies next week and start going down our list of topics. And thank you for those of you that made comments um, through text message. Look forward to it next week. What's your song, Mr. Invitation song tonight is number 546, Jesus is Coming Soon. Let me read the first stanza of this song. Troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, now is at stake. Humbling your hearts to God, saves from the chastening rod, seeking the way pilgrims trod, Christians awake. And then the chorus is, Jesus is coming soon. Morning or night, or noon, many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound, all of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies. That's a great song, and I appreciate that. I know I've talked the last few weeks about Christian warfare, and, and that we are really engaged in a spiritual battle. There's a lot of uncertainty right now. Uh, I've kind of gotten to the point, honestly, where I, I don't really watch the evening news much, it's super depressing, right? Um, and I know there's a lot of good things happening out there that the media chooses not to tell us about. Most of the people in the world, 85, maybe 90% of the people out there in the world are really good and honest people. We just don't hear about that on the evening news. So um, basically, I want you to remember that whatever happens, whatever your future holds, if you keep putting your trust in God, if he's your anchor, if he's your rock, if you turn to him, he'll always be there for you. And remember that whatever happens, he's coming soon. He will be here. The Bible tells us that life is like a vapor, like steam that comes out of the kettle. You, you're born and you die. The Bible says that that's really like seasonal grass. It grows up, the sun comes down, it withers, it's gone. It's a very quick process. Our life is short. So tonight... I just want you to be comforted and know that as you journey, as you struggle, as you get a little anxious over things that are happening that are out of your control, there is one who, who is in control, and that is the Lord, and he's coming soon. So we hope that as you sing this song, you'll be encouraged. If you need to respond, if you need prayers, if there's anything we can do for you tonight, we invite you to come. We're going to stand and sing. Roy? Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, though we let past. They send rod, they put up the divine. They do not feel grounds, try Christians away. Soon, morning or night or noon, many will meet their doom. Trumpets will surely sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies. Going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Trouble some time, nay more. Home of gold in the God world. Can we start this over? I'm sorry, guys.
My eyes got blurry. Troublesome times are here, feeling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, now is at stake. Humble your heart to God, saves in the chasing rod. Seek the way pilgrims trod, Christians awake. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will surely sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies. Going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Love with so many cold, losing their home of gold. Listen, God's word is told, evil's abound. When these signs come past, then the end at last. It will come very fast, trumpets will sound. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will surely sound. All of the dead shall rise, might just meet in the skies, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Troubles will soon be o'er, happy forevermore. When we meet on that shore, free from all care. Rising up in the sky, telling the world goodbye. Homeward we then will fly, glory to share. Jesus is coming soon. Morning or night or noon, many will meet their doom. Trumpets will surely sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies. Going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Thank God for grace. Who's got closing prayer? All right. Mr. Stacy has our closing prayer, so I'll ask you to speak up, and he will uh, write down the names of anybody on our prayer request. I have a few quick announcements. We did receive a call from Miss Pat Warren. She asked us to pray for her daughter-in-law, Debbie, Debbie Warren. This is Dale's wife. Debbie's been having some hip dislocation, and unfortunately it happened where the hip dislocated. She fell and broke her kneecap. So, ouch. <laughs> I'm like, that's got to hurt. So we need to pray for Miss Debbie Warren. That's Pat's daughter-in-law. Dale is an elder in Arkansas in BB, I believe. So just uh, remember Pat. The Lady Sun Group is going to meet Friday at, at 1230 Fellowship Hall. We are going to do our monthly singing at Dogwood Bend. Uh, that is right down from the YMCA on uh, off Memorial Drive, Extension uh, Memorial Drive. Anyway, if you know where the Y is, um, at Dogwood is just right down there. Uh, it's at 2, 2 p.m. We need to bring a mask, uh, and we're at the facility. You can see Howard if you have any questions, but just show up there and sing. We would really appreciate it if you could come. And the residents really enjoy it. They love it. There's a graduation banquet scheduled May 16 at 7 p.m. We need you to sign up by this Sunday on the youth board. And if you plan to attend so they can know how much food to prepare. Uh, there is a brush up on friendship. This is a fellowship meal and a little artist lesson. They have a, an artist that's going to teach some ladies painting. That's been rescheduled May 22. If you would like to come to this and find out the cost, you can see Meg. Um, there's a sign-up sheet on the youth board for all those interested in Bible Bowl this year. Study sessions begin in June. Uh, you can see Shannon if you have other questions. Uh, we do have a few updated membership sheets for your directory located on the table in the foyer. I think there's four of them out there. So updated information, grab some of those and put them in your membership directory. Okay, uh, any special announcements 
family, friends that we need to know about, prayer request. Anybody? Nobody over here? All right. Anybody? All right. Oh, um, yes, I had one. This is uh, Rocky Shepherd's niece. She has been on our prayer list. Uh, yeah, Melissa Shepherd. She asked um, to announce that Rocky's niece, Melissa Shepherd, passed away this afternoon. No arrangements have been made at this time. She had been on our card list to encourage, and uh, we just found out that she passed away today. So keep Rocky and, and all of that uh, family in prayer. Melissa Shepherd, uh, her family, and um, no, no arrangements, but uh, they'll let us know once they know. So that was the only additional announcement I had. Any, anyone else? Okay, if not, what's our count tonight? 74, very good. No, 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 no. Um, Rocky's niece, yeah. Uh, her name, Rocky Shepherd's niece, her name is Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, Melissa Shepherd. So just keep that family in, in prayer. Uh, Rocky's niece, Melissa, passed away today. And we'll uh, let you know more about arrangements when we know. All right, if there's no announcements or prayer requests, then we'll uh, turn it over to Stacy for a closing prayer. We'll be dismissed. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father in heaven, for the bound, bountiful kindness that you've extended to us tonight, that we, it, with peace and comfort, can, can be together to have each other, to enjoy God's family, to open your word, and to, to feel free to, to seek you, to seek you without fear and anxiety, persecution, and turmoil. Thank you that we have a banquet of peace to share with each other tonight. Thank you for the sweetness of your word, the opportunity to learn truth. As you said through James, you give wisdom to any of us that asks without finding fault an enormous and incredible blessing of mercy and kindness. Please guide us through our knowledge and our search and our coming to know you so that we would have that wisdom and lead us into paths of truth knowing that at all times we're being bombarded by Satan's lies. We pray for uh, Debbie Warren and the pain and the difficulty she's having. Also, Rocky Shepherd losing Melissa and that you would give us opportunities to do what you command us to do in your word, which is to serve others, especially those in the family of faith. Thank you for this wonderful time. In Jesus' name, amen. No comments tonight on the Holy Spirit.